Hello everybody. Today we are going to cover extractive metallurgy of copper. Here is the, my presentation outline, introduction and general information, physical and chemical properties of copper, copper minerals, production methods for copper, hydrometallurgical extraction, hydrometallurgical extraction, electrometallurgical production, and also electrowinning process will be outlined. Copper, you know, in German, kupfer, in French, cuvier, copper, cypher in Latin. Copper, as you know, is one of the oldest metals produced by human. The reason was because copper is found in pure form and can be beaten into shape even when cold, okay, because it's a ductile metal. The copper metal is symbolized by Venus mirror. It is also a symbol of femininity because it collects all the metals inside. There are more than 200 copper minerals known today, yet four different sulfur-based ores are employed, and this corresponds to 80% of copper word production. Let's remember, mineral is not an ore, but every ore is mineral. When you get money, when you, when you make money out of this mineral, we call it ore. If it is not, uh, you cannot get money out of this, we call it minerals, basically. So money plays a vital role in establishing these concepts. Concentration on Earth is between 50 to 50 gram per ton. This will change, okay? And the cutoff grade is 0.2 to 0.3, depending on the plant and the energy that we, that we use, okay? This is also changes. Market price is about 10,000 years, so also depending on the market uh, bid and supply will also will change. Cutoff grade, what is cutoff grade? Cutoff grade is the minimum level of a mineral that can be mined, that can be treated at a profit, okay? Below this level, you cannot produce this metal because it, it will be very costly. When we uh, talk about gold, ladies and gentlemen, it would be about one ppm. So this cutoff grade changes from metal to metal, okay? You don't need to memorize anything, just uh, try to follow what I am saying, okay? General information on copper, as you know, symbol is, CU is uh, come from Latin word. Um, atomic number is 29, and this is the transition metal. Weight number is 62.5 gram. The density is about nine gram per cubic centimeter. Melting point is 1083 Celsius. The boiling point 2562 Celsius. Color, as you know, is reddish. Crystal structure, FCC, face center cubic. So this is the malleable and soft metal. Reduction potential is 0.34. What's the reduction potential? When it is in the liquid form, aqueous solution, it gets to electron, goes to copper zero. E is plus 0.34 volt. It is a semi-noble metal. So reduction potential is greater than hydrogen reduction potential, which is 0.0, .0 volt. This value is arbitrarily chosen as 0, 0.0 volt. And this is the reason we call it semi-noble metal. Metal production figures for comparison in the year 2011, over 1 billion tons of iron, 35 million tons of aluminum, because it's very inexpensive to produce. 
and you can find iron everywhere and also aluminum, but this is costly to produce and this is the reason why 35 million tons and 20 million tons of copper, 40% is recycled annually. As you see, recycling plays an important role in our economy and 60,000 tons of titanium. As you would remember, titanium uh, is abundant metal, more abundant actually than copper, but the production is very costly. This is the reason uh, 60,000 tons of titanium is produced annually about. As you know, application areas of copper, the electric and electric industry, 50%, the construction industry, 17%, industrial equipment, 14%, transportation industry, 11%, and military and other industries, 8%. So we need copper actually. Oh, by the way, our body, human body needs also copper. But if you exceed copper, it needs, it leads to poisoning. Pure copper. In ancient times, people used to uh, extract pure copper, we call it in Turkish nabit copper. You can directly use this copper, more than 99% copper. But nowadays you cannot find this purity. So instead of 99%, we are dealing with 0.2 to 0.3% copper. Mm, at most 1% copper can be treated economically. Sulfur-based copper is calcopyrite, calcium, coaline, and bornite. Oxide-based copper or malahid azurite, ankri, zoko. Also, there are kinerite-based copper ores. Remember, more than 200 minerals, but only four uh, copper minerals or copper ore can be treated at a profit. Here is a sulfur and oxide-based copper ores, calcopyrite, you know, most frequently used uh, copper mineral, copper ore, which contain 34.6% copper, bornite, the copper 5, iron S4, contain 63.3% copper, covalent copper sulfite, here copper uh, plus two balance, here, copper plus one balance value. This contain corresponds <clears throat> to 9.9% copper. As you know, malahit, azure, because all you can see the uh, molecular formula, uh, etc. So the copper content changes depending on the uh, copper ores. Now I would like to mention the mat mode uh, production. And th there are also uh, various processes to directly produce metallic uh, copper, but mostly, first of all, copper ore is converted into copper sulfide, other metal sulfide, we call it mat. And then copper sulfide, is converted to elemental copper, metallic copper. So it has to be step by step. There is certain reasons for this. Soft furnace, electric arc furnace, laboratory furnace, flash furnace is carried out in Etibakar plant, autocompo and ink processes. This Finlandia uh, created this process, this system. Reverberatory furnace or flame furnace, a rectangular furnace with a dimension of 30 times, four times 10 meter. Charge is consigned or weight concentrate is fed 
from top of the furnace, fossil fuel is used, not electricity, fossil fuel is used. Matt and slag comparison are in the walls, see each other. So matte contains about 20 to 45% copper. Initially, 1%, 1 percent, 1 percent copper is converted to about 20 percent copper and then so two content is below one person slack which is <coughs> not valuable slack content is one person copper is not so valuable so this slack should be treated uh, furthermore yeah, this slack should be uh, treated further to get this copper Again, this furnace, uh, furnace contains no metallic part and magnesite and chromium magnesite breakers are employed. Here, you know, this is pyrometallurgical process. This is our sulfide ore, which contain half to 2% copper. Combination, we need to make sure below 100 micron. We call it liberation. We make sure liberation is carried out the ore is down to uh, minus 100 micron and then it's subjected to flotation the copper minerals are made hydrophobic which means copper mineral when they use bubbling goes to other side whereas other minerals uh, precipitate or settles down and in this way we make copper minerals hydrophobic and we can increase copper content of the concentrate here uh, concentration increases to 20 to 30 percent copper and then drying and flash furnace is a uh, process is carried out for example, in Samsung in copper plant and drying electric furnace, uh, green concentrate, reverberatory furnace, blast furnace, continuous process, but generally flash furnace is preferred. And then after that, we produce matte, copper sulfide and iron sulfide. We call it matte, okay? and the copper content increased to 30 percent and after the con converting process it's carried out after the converting process we produce blister copper the concentration for a third person to 30 percent to 98 percent or uh, 99 percent copper as you know this is an art this is actually metallurgy is an art. And further anode refining and casting, we create anodes 99.5%. Is it enough? This purity enough? No. This purity is not enough for various applications. Electrics and electronics industry is not good enough. So we need to refine further. An electro refining process is carried out and we produce cathodes is about 94.9. We call it 49. 99.99% 99 .99 copper is produced. And then melting, open mode casting or continuous casting, fabrication and use. As you know, 0 0.5 to 2% copper is turned into fabrication. Uh, product which is 99.99 percent .99%. let's look at the roasting diagrams here is we call it Kellogg Kellogg diagrams in the Kellogg diagrams you can see pressure of oxygen as well as pressure of SO2 gas sulfur dioxide gas and the, the important thing, thing to remember is temperature is set constant here for example let's choose uh, 650 celsius 
This is the predominance diagram for copper, oxygen, and sulfur system. If you set the parameters, you can create copper sulfide, or you can uh, make sure copper product is converted into copper sulfate, copper two sulfate, copper one sulfate, copper uh, sulfite, or elemental copper, copper oxide, and uh, copric oxide. This is copperous, copperous oxide, and this is copric oxide. Here, plus one balance is plus two. Or you can also produce copper oxide, copper sulfate. We call it basic copper sulfate. This is valuable diagram, actually, roasting diagrams. When you roast the material, calcopyrite uh, mineral, calcopyrite concentrate at 650 Celsius, depending on the pressure of SO2 and the, let's say, oxygen pressure is set to here, you can produce copper sulfate. What does it mean? UFS2 is converted to copper sulfate plus iron compound. What is the importance of this? This copper sulfate is treated with water, water, because it is water soluble product and we can dissolve copper sulfate quite easily in hot water, for example. Hot water is a uh, good agent than cold water uh, for various purposes. When we increase the uh, temperature, also we can produce copper sulfate and also copper basic sulfate. So we see that at this temperature value, depending on uh, oxygen pressure, we produce this one, both copper sulfate and copper basic sulfate. This can easily be dissolved in water. On the other hand, basic copper sulfate cannot dissolve in water. So this could be treated with diluted sulfuric acid. Here, when we further increase the temperature up to 850 Celsius, and this, uh, under these conditions, we can uh, produce copper oxide. Copper oxide cannot be dissolved in hot water or uh, cold water, can only dissolve in diluted sulfuric acid or any other mineral acid. On the other hand, let's look at uh, iron, oxygen, sulfur system. Again, we can create using Kellogg diagrams based on SO2 gas and oxygen gas. Here, we can, we are here probably iron oxide. Let's increase the temperature further here uh, up to 750 Celsius here in this range. Again, iron oxide. Let's further increase the temperature. Uh, so when I say increase temperature, we make sure temperature is constant, okay? Temperature is constant. Here, let me down here. Here in this region. This region is iron oxide. Iron oxide cannot be dissolved in water. Also, hot water 
cold water or sulfuric acid cannot dissolve in or diluted sulfuric acid. So we are good to go. What does it mean? I mean that copper dissolved in the solution, whereas iron oxide is insoluble in water. So we can separately, uh, selectively separate this, uh, each component from one another. It's a good separation, actually. Selective separation is carried out. And this is the reason why the calorie diagram is important. So using this uh, calorie diagrams, we can separate copper uh, product from iron product. Iron oxide here can be furthermore treated by carbon monoxide to produce elemental iron, metallic iron. And you know, first iron oxide converted into by the help of carbon and carbon monoxide, first magnetite and rustite, and finally converted into metallic iron. Let's go back to our process. 85% of the primary copper in the world comes from low-grade sulfide ores, which are usually treated by pyrometallurgical methods. Nearly all pyrometallurgical copper processes are based on the total oxidation of sulfur-containing concentrates. I'd like to repeat, the total oxidation of sulfur-containing concentrates. When you see sulfur, this is hazardous material. That's right, hazardous material. But on the other hand, when you oxidize this sulfur, it gives off energy, which is good, okay? Using this energy, you can carry out your process without adding additional energy. You don't need to supply additional energy. Using the oxidation of sulfur, it gives off energy and you can harness this energy, ladies and gentlemen. This is a good point. Also, you would remember this copper hazardous, but doesn't mean we don't run this process. No, what I am saying is here, well, what I am driving at is here, you convert sulfur to sulfur oxide, further sulfur trioxide, and sulfur trioxide is converted by the help of catalysis. When I do pentoxide, let me write down here, vanadium pentoxide, it could be converted SO3, and this SO3 gas converted to sulfuric acid. So we should know how to do it, okay? Flotation to get a concentrate, two-state pyrometric treatment, smelting concentrates to mass, converting met by oxidation to blister copper, refining the blister copper usually in two steps, pyrometrical to fire refined copper, electrically to high purity electric copper. The pyrometrical process produces blister copper, iron silicate slag, this is pyolite uh, slag, this is the important slag in uh, non-iron, non-ferrous metallurgical processes, and SO2 gas. Iron oxide and silicate, we call it pyolite slag. Flash furnace operations, both roasting and smelting take place at the same time. The idea is to use as little fuel as possible. Roasting gives us energy. So this is the reason we can use little fuel. To harness this energy for the smelting the mat. Here, this is our ore, calcopyrite. is oxidized and then we can uh, create iron oxide, SO2 gas, and our product that we are interested in. This is 
basically money but not in this form copper oxide should also be converted into copper this gives us money and also this should be 99.99 percent .99%. me if you are interested in using this copper in electrical and electronics industry we need to make sure we need to ensure that it has to be 499.99%. Here, the concentrate and sand, uh, this is silicon dioxide, this concentrate burner oil, and the preheated air or oxygen enriched air is fed to system. This is reaction shaft. In this compartment, you produce mat, and in this compartment, you get slag. This is more viscous, and the melting temperature of slag is lower than melting temperature of mat. And in this way, we can separate. Separation is carried out by using this method. Mat and slag can be successfully separated from each other. Let's look at the converting process. In this process, well, <clears throat> converting is important. You need to convert metal sulfide into metal oxide or elemental uh, form of copper. In this process, copper metal is converted to blister copper. The reactor is called converter. Following reaction takes place. Oxidation of iron sulfide. So we produce Hamilton. Formation of slag, pyrolyte slag, iron oxide and silicon dioxide. And formation of copper. As you see here, during the process, we produce copper oxide as well as copper sulfide, and we produce six copper and SO2 gas. This is spontaneous reaction because the need for oxygen uh, to, to be bound, binded by copper is lower than that of sulfur. So oxygen prefer sulfur, and similarly, sulfur uh, prefers oxygen to make bonding. So they leave copper, they leave copper alone, and in this way we can produce metallic copper. And here, formation of metallic copper is ensured. The first blowing step is for removal of iron in which iron silicate slag is formed by light. The second blowing step is the production of metallic copper. The oxidation reaction of iron sulfide gives more energy than the oxidation of copper sulfide. To benefit this heat as well as to protect the converter and reflectors, cold charge is fed to the furnace. So it gives extra energy. So we need to use this heat. Uh, we need to harness this energy, heat energy, thermal energy. Also, we need to protect our converter and refractories. This is the reason why we need to feed cold charge into the furnace. So there is always a reason for these processes. So we need to uh, learn how to reason. Okay, reasoning is important you don't need to memorize as an engineer you don't need to memorize anything just we need to use our brain and information and experience we need to use our experience the more we deal with this kind of things the more experienced we will be and based on this experience and literature survey and being vigilant we can create new other processes hopefully so reasoning is important 
here charging to converter as you see is elevated temperature so we need to be very careful about these processes here cement converter length is nine meter diameter four meter there are uh, 40 to 50 to this gives this glo gloves oxygen or oxygen enriched pure oxygen or oxygen enriched air efficiency of oxygen use is between 50 to 95 percent copper content of oxide depends on the ratio of iron oxide to silica two is the ideal copper content of slag is between two to six percent which is very high so it should be recycled because this is in the slag slag is uh, not desirable species but it contain uh, about two to six person copper so we need to recycle this uh, also subject to the crashing or combination grinding and flotation and then returning to flash furnace because this is money there is a loop ladies and gentlemen here we need to harness everything we see each step okay there is a loop if something goes out of this we need to make sure it goes into inside this loop okay we need to harness anything we see we need to harness all energy we need to uh, benefit all species and this is basically engineering engineering we need to take economy into consideration. Impurities present in blister copper. While leaving sulfur leaving the copper, it creates bubbling. And this is the reason we call it blister copper. Blister copper contains 97 to 99% copper. This is not suitable in electrical purposes 99 percent of the pressure metal dissolved in blister copper because they are precious noble metals it follows these metals gold silver platinum group metals um, maybe mercury uh, no i don't think so mercury these metals precious metal uh, follows the copper so this is the reason 99 percent of precious metals dissolve in blistered copper arsenic antimony and bismuth let's look at five to twenty percent dissolve in blistered copper 65 to ninety percent flies with bagasse gases because they can they can fly Okay, antimony and arsenic can quite easily fly. And this goes to back house gases. They also collected in the uh, filters. Around 10% is converted to slag. Selenium and tellur is uh, about 60% in blistered copper and 30% goes to slag. Nickel goes to blistered copper and 25% goes to slag. Lead goes to 5% and most of the lead flies and can be collected in the back house, about uh, 85% and 10% goes to slag. Zinc goes to, because this is an active metal, not precious or noble metal, and flies and go to the big house and seven person goes to slack and tin this tin goes to 10 percent mystery copper 65 percent back house and about uh, 27 percent goes to slack 
Conventional refining comprises two stages. Pyrometallurgical or fire refining, V is the electrolytic refining. Fire refining is used for blister copper for converted 97 to 99% copper. Cement copper, you know, cementation from our laboratories, in chemical metallurgical laboratories. Cement copper from hydrometric operations, 85 to 90% copper. Anode scrap from electrolytic refining and high grade copper scrap. The refining of molten copper to anode copper to electrolysis has the following functions. Improving impurities by the formation of slag, reducing sulfur content about all points of, of three persons by oxidation. So, you know, oxygen loves sulfur to make sure we produce sulfur dioxide. And also decreasing oxygen content below 0.1 percent by reduction. How is reduction carried out? We call it polling. In Turkish, kavaklama. By the help of these these trees, these trees contain carbon and hydrogen. By the help of these uh, carbon species and hydrogen species, we can remove oxygen from the uh, copper oxide, we get metallic copper and also hydrogen can do this as well. Pyrometers with copper refining, the sulfur content of blister copper should be decreased from 0.03% to below 0.03%, which corresponds to, I think, 30 ppm, since the electrolyte requires for the surf surface anodes. Besides, removal of impurities in the state is important for the prevention of contamination of electrolyte. In Thomas furnace oxidation, air is blown to molten copper so as to increase oxygen content uh, 0.5 to 1 person. Reduction polling 35 kilogram 3 per ton copper. During the polling process, copper contains 0 0.0 to 0.05 percent oxygen and 10 to minus 5 percent hydrogen. After polling, then we need to cast as anode. Furthermore, we are going to treat this anode to create, to produce cathodes. 0 0.04 oxygen and 10 to minus 6 hydrogen. Roasting plus cementing and converting are all carried out in a single process. There are uh, other production based on copper mod. Mitsubishi model uh, carried out by Japan, Noranda process, uh, Itachi process, these are carried out in Japan. Briggs Lake, QSN TBR process also carried out to get uh, copper metal. When we go back to converting process, it takes about 20 hours to treat 50% containing copper metal in the converting furnace. 30% for slagging, we need to create slag. 17.5% for oxidation of copper sulfide. And 40% for removal of slag, charge of mat, additional fluxes, we need to add flux. Flux means to create slag, we need to add silica, silicon dioxide and 12.5 is about a waste of time. The physical life of chromium magnesite briquettes in the furnaces is between 100 and 200 days. So, so there's a life and shell life. Yeah. The greatest part of the world platinum group and production comes from processing copper and not slimes. Probably also gold and uh, silver can be produced by this processing copper anode slides. 
the gold and silver. Probably you would remember from the video that we watched in, in the lecture. Anode slimes are sent to Imicor in Belgium and the refining process are carried out there. Anode casting. In order to have an excellent conductivity in copper, electrolytic refining is an inevitable process. For this purpose, fire refined copper is cast as anode, I mentioned, and the electrolytic refining is subsequently carried out. We, all, we have already mentioned this electrolytic refining. Corrosion system, anode life 28 days, cathode 14 days, thickness uh, 35 to 50 millimeter. Hazard anode casting system, anode cathode life is the same, thickness is 13.19 uh, millimeter. Weight of anode is between 300 to uh, 350 kilograms. Let's uh, briefly look at the hydrometallurgical uh, treatment of copper. Malachite and azurite are the most important copper oxide. Here is the malachite green, and these are the blue, you know, due to the uh, presence of copper minerals, copper uh, species. These are most important copper oxide for hydrometallurgical production. There are various minerals, but these are called ores and they can be treated at a profit. Copper ores, these uh, oxygen-based ores are not suitable for pyrometallurgy. What is suitable? Copper sulfide, sulfide-based minerals are suitable for pyrometallurgy. And copper oxide-based uh, ores are suitable for hydrometallurgical extraction. Please, we do not, we should not mix this concept from one another. Okay, copper ores, which contain about 0.75% copper. It's subjected to ore dressing. This, you don't need to memorize these values. These changes from plant to plant, from the process to process, okay? And from the energy that we produce, okay? If you can get the energy very cheap, then maybe you can treat 0.5% copper, okay? Just general outline is given here. It's subject to, to ore dressing or preparation, and then the combination in grinding, etc. And sulfuric acid leaching is carried out. And you remember from pyrometrical process, we can produce sulfuric acid, and this produced sulfuric acid is successfully be used for the leaching of uh, copper ores. And copper dissolved in the solution and can be treated by iron. Cementation with metallic iron and the cement copper is produced because copper is more noble than iron. Using this method, we produce copper. This is called cement copper. In Turkish, tersip or ters bakır and iron 2 plus or solvent extraction plus electrobining and electrobining and electrobone copper. Uh, and also, this electrobone copper contain 99.99% copper. This electrobone copper, electro using electrobining process. Is similar to electro refining, but uh, some parameters are different actually. 15% of the primary copper originates from low grade oxide ores. Such methods are generally treated by hydrometallurgical methods, as, as I said earlier. Sulfide ores, ores, carbonates silicates, sulfates, or, or chlorides, okay? 
is subjected to flotation. If it is suitable for flotation, then we create uh, oxide concentrates and or roast sulfates, sulfites, and agitation with sulfuric acid and electrolyte is directly subject to electrobinning process. Uh, more than 99.9% copper can be produced, produced to melting casting and fabrication. And if it is one to two percent copper, the wet leaching uh, carried out using sulfuric acid and electrolyte is created and subject to electrovinning process. If the ore is lean, lean means poor in terms of copper content, lower than one percent copper, is subject to the heap leaching with sulfuric acid and pregnant leach solution. Pregnant leach solution. This pregnant leach solution, about five gram per liter, is subject to the cementation with iron scrap, and then we produce impure copper precipitates. It goes to pyrometric converter or cementing furnace because it contains both copper and iron. You know, you can quite easily remove iron by pyrometric methods, or is subject to, to solvent extraction. What is Essex solvent extraction? This behaves like a magnet. Magnet. It only goes for copper to plus and discard other minerals, other uh, metals. Like a magnet, it can collect copper and furthermore, uh, the copper content increase. If it is five gram, it becomes, for example, 40 gram per liter and it provides the solution. Well, hydrometric extraction of copper, let's see. go on. Hydrometrical methods have advantages of specific adaptability and high selectivity. They are particularly suitable for processing low content, low copper content, oxidized copper ores, residues, and intermediate products. The cost of hydrometric process also depend on the copper content, so cost changing. But generally, the copper costs are up to 50% lower than conventional pyrometrical processes. So hydrometrical has certain advantages over pyrometrical methods. These advantages are the relative slowness of leaching process, the large volume of solution per unit mass of copper and the complicated extraction of precious metals that remain in the leaching residues. So you cannot uh, recover up to 100% these precious metals, PGM, gold, and silver, okay? These are the disadvantages of hydrometrical extraction processes. But up to 50% is less costly. This is the advantage. You know, I'm sure you know very well about the cementation. Let me repeat uh, for you. Cementation actually is the reduction and precipitation of copper from sulfuric acid leach solutions by iron from sulfuric acid pregnant leach solution, PLS. It is the oldest hydrometrical method. The cementation reaction can be shown as here. This is copper sulfate plus iron. It could be scrap iron and copper plus iron sulfate. Very straightforward, uh, very direct, very uh, economical process. The precipitate cement copper is an impure copper containing 60 to 90% copper. You need to treat this cement copper further uh, with sulfuric acid. As you would remember, copper is 
more noble than hydrogen, then this is the reason sulfuric acid has no action on copper at room temperature. If you treat this cement copper, this contain uh, iron, etc. other elements, this sulfuric acid can remove impurities and without touching copper. Copper cannot be dissolved in dilute sulfuric acid solution. And the further treatment is done by pyrometrical processes. Pure cement copper can be used as raw material for the production of copper sulfate. For example, uh, metal kim LTD. This uh, this plant can treat this kind of uh, cement copper to produce copper sulfate pentane hydrate. This is uh, this plant is in Istanbul. What is solvent extraction? It is based on the immiscibility of liquid aqueous and organic bases with high solubility of copper. It behaves like a you know magnet here. Look at these reactions. This is organic phase, reacts with copper, and this R binds to copper, gives of proton hydrogen, and this is loading process and afterwards this loaded copper reacts with uh, strong sulfuric acid it gives off copper and copper is uh, in the solution this is called stripping what is the use of this reaction the first of all copper concentration increases for example five gram per liter Five gram per liter becomes 40 gram per liter. The copper content increases and purification is carried out by using this method because if it is nickel, iron, zinc, titanium, etc., there is no reaction. They cannot be loaded onto radical, onto uh, this organic phase. And this is the reason purification is carried out and when the application of uh, sulfuric acid, we can produce a high copper content solution. And this copper content solution is suitable for electrolysis, electro winning. The ASICS process comprises two steps, selective extraction of copper from lead solution into an organic phase and the re-extraction or stripping of the copper into dilute sulfuric acid to give a solution suitable for electrobeating. There are two important groups of proven organic chemicals for solvent extraction. This Lix type, for example, Lix 65 and Kelex type. This kind of chemicals is successfully used for the solvent extraction of copper. I think that's it for now. Thank you very much for listening to me. Goodbye.